from the heart of El Monte City Hall West, it's El Monte Tonight with your host, Arturo Esparza. Tonight's guest lineup from Manuel's original Atapiac, Joey Duran, and Miss, Mr. McCall Jones III, founder and CEO of the Institute for Adult Communication, Lorna Silva, life coach, leadership and communication consultant, as well as Raymond Ponson, and Quipo Ohula Troop, and Norma and Angela of Southern California Medical Center, and our guest band, Backstreet. And I'm yours truly, Miss Jamie Neary. Backstreet, go on, take us away. All right, thank you, Jamie. Ooh, great to be here tonight. El Monte tonight. We are the Backstreet Band, and we're gonna groove for you right now.
Oh, that was so good. I just can't. Man, Backstreet, man. It was worth waiting to watch you guys set up, you know? Let's give him another round of applause, man. Is... Yeah, we're ready to groove tonight. Here we are at Amani tonight, the little show around the corner and up the block from where you live, here in the beautiful heart of El Monte, California, on Time Warner Channel 3, or as we call El Monte, the Bel Air of the San Gabriel Valley. And uh, we have a lot of talent here in this studio. Uh, not only the Backstreet Band, we have all kinds of people. We got McCall Jones, we got uh, Lorna Silva, we have met my good buddy and all around good guy Ray Ponson. Uh, we have the hula troupe that's going to be dancing and uh, delighting you with some of their magic in their movements. And we have uh, Norma and Angela of the Southern California Medical Center. So we have a lot of people to go through. So we're going to start it off right now with one man who is not a stranger to our show. We love him. He's our one of our uh, ever contributing sponsors here. We have a round of applause for Mr. Joey Duran from Manuel's Al Tepiac, please. What's up, Joey? Good to see you. All right, man, I'm glad they got him mic'd up. So what's the latest? What's happening at Manuel's? What's, you know, what's well, going on? you know, the, the latest thing that's going on is we've got 13 weeks of 13 Dodgers that we're having uh, autographs at the cantina. Oh, wow. Uh, we've had uh, Manny Mota, Jay Johnstone, and Rudy Law. And this week we have Bobo Castillo is gonna come on Sunday night at okay. 5 o'clock to give autographs to everybody that comes over. Um, we're going to have more Wills going to come in. Uh, Ken Landro and, um, let's see, I wrote it down right here. Uh, and Manny Motor is going to come back. So we have a lot of people coming. So every Sunday at 5 o'clock, we're going to have a Dodger there to give autographs. Okay, you guys yeah. heard that. Those of you that are Dodger fans, yeah. and I'm sure there's a few of you left out there after our season so far. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. They're the old timers, so you know. The yeah, ones, yeah. The, the ones that we love and grew up. They were doing the heyday, the heyday. Absolutely. And that's what we're talking about. Yeah, you know, uh, Manny Mota, his daughter Cecilia Mota does uh, uh, one of our shows, our woman's talk show, Heart and Soul. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's all yeah. a family operation here in Almani. You can't get away from it. Well, you know, you know, Ma Manny Mota does a great. He's got a great foundation. You know, every time we do it, it's for charity. Right. Yeah. You know, people bring in uh, toys, or they bring in ten dollars to 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 give their charity. They, he signs everything. He signs bats, balls. 
anything that you want. So he's, it's, he's a great draw. He, he doesn't sign the manual special? He signs the manual special, too. I got him on, on that as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to make sure. I, know he's, I tell you, Joey's nice enough to bring us some eats, but I didn't know. Look at the band's ready. They're, they're ready, ready yeah. yeah they're you got ready. the big burrito in the back over there. So when you guys are dead, you got it. Yeah, so we, he didn't, you know, he told me, seriously, he was telling me, you should have told me I would have brought two. If I would have yeah. known, yeah. Yeah, if I'd have known so many people, I'd have bought more. So. Well, you know, like I tell you, we're picking, picking up steam. That's what happens you know, when we do it. There you go. But uh, so a little bit of background on Manuel's out there. Yeah, how's the, uh, you guys just celebrated what, your uh, second right. anniversary? Seek of the Mine was our second anniversary. Yeah, okay. and uh, in city of industry, you know, we've been in uh, Boyle Heights for 55 years. Right. My grandfather, Malcolm Manuel, started it. Uh, uh, 1955 and uh, you know I'm a third generation owner you know unfortunately we all lost my uncle in February right and uh, so I'm kind of going back and forth between uh, Boyle Heights and uh, in city of industry and uh, hopefully you know knock on wood we'll have another one in the, in the year 2000, uh, 2013 Really? Where? Yeah. Uh, yeah I'll, I'll come back and let you know when we sign the deal. Yeah, please man. Why don't you bring one out here to Almani? We could use one. <laughs> no, I'm gonna get a lot of letters from all our restaurants over here. No, we love the restaurants here, but their, their restaurant's iconic. I mean, it's part of anybody who grew up in the east side like I did. I mean, everybody knew Manuel's. In fact, that was our family church assumption right across the street. Right across, yeah. In fact, you had my compadre, Father Tony. He did uh, the services for your uncle. Yeah. And he made, a, he made a crack about that. You know, uh, if you recall, he was saying, you know, where's the church? Oh, across from Manuel's. Yeah. Because well, nobody knew he, where the church was at. Yeah, he, he opened it up. He says, welcome to uh, the church across from Maltepia Cafe. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's nobody how knows the assumption, but they know the church. Yeah, they do, they do. Yeah. So, okay, so, you know, in other words, then anybody can come on by on Sunday, Sunday at what, 5 o'clock, did you Sunday say? Sunday at 5 o'clock for the, for un, until uh, until August, at the end of, uh, of uh, July. We're going to have uh, a Dodger there. Like I say, you know, look on our website or, or the billboard we have out there. And, right. You know, now we have uh, Bobby Castillo coming this week and then uh, the Kenny and Andrew the next week, so. Well, that sounds fantastic, yeah. man. I tell you, Joey, we always love having you. I just hope one day you'll be able to get somebody to cover for you so you can stay the whole show. Oh, I know. You know, I got to work, work, work the, work the well, restaurant. You that's, know? A, that's the way it goes. You know, I know how it is, man. But, you yeah. know, uh, any parting shots you want to give out to anybody out there? Well, you know, I just, uh, you know, want to wish, you know, uh, everybody come over to Altepia Cafe and City of Industry and Boyle Heights. You know, in, in City of Industry, we've got, uh, you know, Taco Tuesday. We have uh, mariachis on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. And, uh, you know, come out and, and have a good time. You know, it's, it's, it's a great place to come. You know, we still give the shots over there at uh, at Bull Heights. You know, in, in tradition of my tio Manuel. You know, right, we have right, right. shots of tequila on, on on the weekend over there. So come on down. Over I didn't know well. that. I didn't know because I know that you guys never had uh, you know uh, beverages of well, that nature back then. Well, you know, it's, yeah. it's kind of it's kind of a manual thing that you know. That oh we, yeah. That we kind of yeah. get going. Tradition, so. yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Well, that sounds really good. Maybe we can get Backstreet to go down there one day. Yeah, and, come, uh, come on down. Yeah. Come know, on down. The band alone will keep you in business. Look at the Absolutely. size of that group. Absolutely. Eh? You know, we got a cantina there. Maybe we could do something over so there. So there's that young man in the back. Look, you see, he's trying to make himself look small, but look at <laughs> him. He's, you know, he's good for at least a manuals and a half right there. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Joey. It's always it. great having you. And thank you for, uh, you know, coming out and buying. Hopefully, like I said, we'll get you uh, to come by and, uh, you know, stay the whole show next time. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate you. Let's Appreciate have a round of applause for Joey Duran. Man's off Tepia. Well, I guess that brings us back uh, to the Backstreet Band. Look at They were all getting comfortable. I love that. <laughs> I'm just waiting. They were so cool. You guys are great. Where's that burrito? There it is. See? I told you. It's there. All right. <laughs> Here on Almonte tonight, is it, it's Backstreet Band, right? Is Backstreet. That? Yes. Okay, Backstreet. Backstreet band. Okay, Backstreet. Now, get your story straight. You're under oath. Okay. All right. Here on Almonte tonight, take it away with the Backstreet Band. Thank you so much. This is how we do it on El Monte tonight, and I feel all right. The party's here on the west side, so I reach for my foot and I turn it up. Designated driver takes the key to my truck. Get the shower come faded. Honey's on the streets, say money on your face. Why me? Slap me one time, right? This is how we do it. the website. 
That was so good, man. I tell you, I, just watching them dance and I got tired. <laughs> Made me sweat. Whew. No, you guys are great, man. I, you, you do your own choreogra uh, choreograph choreography? Choreograph Thank you. Good, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, you're working better than my mouth is right now. Okay, so, no, you guys are great and I know they're going to be coming back with some more to delight you. You had the you had the little wine kids going crazy. <laughs> they were rocking out right there, man. Did I tell you, man? We're gonna have to have them come up here and dance the last one with you. All right. Uh next we have on our docket here, uh we have R. McCall Jones, MA, founder and CEO of 
the Institute for Adult Communication or Communication Consultancy help people communicate and connect better. Okay, give me a round of applause for uh, Mr. McCall here. Good to be here. It's great to have you, my friend. So here. I know he, he, you know, he wrote. See, one thing on my show, I shoot from the hip. But he actually wrote me some questions. So if it sounds like a little corny, it's not me, okay? I just, I just read them. I, I don't write them. I know. I have to. I, you know, with a name like McCall Jones, come on. You sound like you should either be in the Old West or, I don't know, a detective. Here we go. I hear you have the ability to transform relationships in a day. Funny enough, that's true. But it depends on two things. It depends on um, at least one of the people being uh, dedicated and committed to the change mm -hmm. and actually take, being willing to take action. But yeah, we can uh, change relationships in a day. Well, we're going we're gonna to switch over mic because we're going to make sure we're going to be able to get, hear you. So I'm going to be doing the hand mic deal okay. as I go back forth. Okay, so you're saying about uh, both people having to be committed in the relationship, right? Yeah. I mean, basically what, what goes on in many relationships is that, uh, the ones that are struggling, is that people get into this game of who's right. And then they just sort of go into their corners and that's where they stay. But where I help people is let them know that the who's right conversation doesn't really work. We have to find out what the other person needs. Well, let me uh, let me ask you a question. Taking that as as it is it makes a lot of sense, I know, because a lot of people are always doing that. Can we send you to Washington to deal with Congress? I'll be happy to go. <laughs> because that's a, that's, that's a group of folks that needs to listen, they need to communicate, they need to understand what the other people want, they need to understand what they want. They've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, I know, because as soon as you said that, I thought of the Republicans and Democrats. The first thing came to mind. Uh, it says uh, you have a recent success story you can want to talk about. Um, yeah, recent success story. Um, I spent about an hour uh, with a client and a uh, very educated woman, uh, PhD in fact, and uh, she just recently divorced from her husband. Um, and after spending an hour with her, I got her in a space where she understood her role in how the marriage fell apart. And she went back to him and they're in the process of reconciling now. So what we train people in works. It works immediately. And as long as they practice it, they can continue to see benefits. Okay. That, that sounds like a winner. Uh, but at what point, okay, let's say at what point would you draw the line? What point would you say, you know, this, this is a no-win situation for a relationship? Yeah, great question. Um, we find that about 95% of the problems that most men and women go through in their relationships are about how they communicate with each other. We find that most of the things that they're challenged by are what goes on in our nature, what goes on in our instinct. You probably heard about hunter-gatherer, and a lot of the instinct is what drives us in relationships. So once we get clear on what our instincts are, we can respect each other's instincts, and we can respect our own instincts. And then for the people that, we're, if, it, if it is a, a last-shot deal, that's like 5% of the time. Because I, we run into a lot of relationships that end that don't really have to because they didn't have the solutions that we have. And as a result, um, they're able to talk it out, understand each other. And if there's still real problems, then they're clear on having to end the relationship. Well, that sounds good to me. I, you would have been great in my first last two marriages. Anyway, <laughs> boy, that, that was a no-win situation. Oh, boy, let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay, what makes your coaching uh, different from therapy or counseling? Yeah, um... We take the approach that most people simply need another way. We take the approach that everyone has the ability to change how they communicate. They can look at their own natures and understand why they do things. And with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit more understanding, they can have an immediate impact on their relationships. Whereas with counseling and therapy, it's much more serious. It talks about you know, old wounds, childhood things. And we don't really have to go that far. We just have a little nudge in most cases, and people go, oh, I get it. Well, it sounds. It sounds. It makes sense, you know, because I don't want to talk about my childhood. Gee whiz, that could be a monster movie. <laughs> Let me tell you. Okay, you got. Uh, let's see, uh, what prevents most people from having better communication? I'm gonna go down these questions one by one. Well, the difficulty for most people is they don't understand what it is they really want, and they don't really understand how to ask for it. A lot of people think they're asking for for things that they need, um, a lot, of, but they're not. They're not really asking for what they want. Um, the feminine women tend to hint to guys. You, you you were probably hinted at a lot in your first two marriages. Yeah, mostly with a chancla, you know, shoe at my head. Oh, the shoe, yeah. yeah. Did, did, but did you pick up the hint? Yeah, yeah, I did eventually after the after the third shoe. But uh, but I, I know what you're saying. I think uh, because a lot of times um, it's the communication factor from the aspect that. Women 
tend to deal with more of the subtleties and nuances. Whereas us guys, you got to hit us over the head, literally. You got to, we're straight out, point blank, if you don't say it. And that usually, I think, works in, the, uh, I used to teach my kids, my students, in relationships. Us guys, we're, we're like two hairs away from being knuckle draggers. And um, like, if a woman says no, you better say no. Don't say, you know, don't hedge around it, whatever, because us guys, we don't know. We don't know. We, we, we don't. We don't take hints. We don't really understand what's going on because we're busy being single focused. We're busy trying to accomplish our mission, trying to win, trying to get the promotion, trying to get the new car, trying to make more money to protect the family. So I speak to a lot of ladies and they say, well, you know, I hinted at him. I was subtle. And I said, well, when was the last time he ever responded to your being subtle? And they said, well, never. And I said, yeah, try, so try this. Ask directly. If you want something, ask for the new ring. Ask for the new car. Ask for the trip to Hawaii. And he's, he's built to make you happy. So it's a win-win situation. If he can help you and help you be happy, he's all for it. And if you can be happy with your request, you're going to be happy. So it's win-win. So what I tell the ladies is ask directly, and you've got better than 97% chance of getting what you need. Especially if they don't have a job. I don't think they'll get the car. But you know, but that's what those people out there. What are my wine people doing? They found something. They're very fascinating. This is an interesting show, let me tell you. You stick around, you're going to see a lot of bizarre things happening. Okay, uh, what are some of the tools that can make a difference? There we go. Well, some of the tools for uh, the gentleman is to understand that women like to share and talk to connect. A lot of times there's no point to what they might be talking about. But we have to accept it and just listen. And you've probably heard women say, oh, you know, I'm not looking for a solution. I'm not really looking for an answer. They're looking to share and connect. So that's one major tool that, that a lot of guys don't really understand that can make a very big difference. And on the other side, for the ladies, they can acknowledge the men for what they do that helps them, that benefits them. Uh, very often a simple acknowledgement of what it is that's hard for him to do every day is enough. Uh, I appreciate that you have to drive to work two hours each way to, uh, to get to work and come back. I appreciate you fixing the washing machine. We call it genuine acknowledgement. And that genuine acknowledgement goes a really long way to helping guys uh, understand that the woman's on his team. That's what that's about. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, it says here, does the coaching stick and does it still work in the long term? The coaching does stick. Uh, it works in the long term, but you have to keep practicing. And it's like going to the gym. You don't go to the gym, well, you end up, you know, not like you go to the gym. So it's the same thing here. You end up like me, I know. I know. See, I was trying to, I was trying to be subtle. Try to be delicate, I know. See, but don't hint at it. And that's the great part, too. You can tease guys, and guys are not going to take it personally. That's another thing. That's another clue, ladies. That's why you see guys teasing each other a lot. So... Yeah, it's, yeah, you have to practice it every day. You have to say, well, am I listening to her? Am I letting her share herself? Am I letting her talk to me so that she can connect? And in reverse, have I acknowledged him? Have I told him how much I think he did a great job today with whatever he had to deal with? Those are the things. Okay, now let's, um, which brings to mind, do you think that in the course of a very busy day, now we have, you know, most uh, families, are two, uh, both partners are working in and out, Hard to get a chance to see each other. Maybe they'll talk at the breakfast table if possible. You're Hopefully, I'm doing. Line by the pool, so. Well, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the pool, what pool we call Whittier Narrows around here, folks. If you're from the east side, anyway. Uh, but you know, like I said, they never get a chance to talk to you. So how can they apply that if they're never seeing each other, or actually talking to each other? Beautiful question. Start with remembering why they're in the relationship together, and scheduling time. No one's that busy. Sorry, folks, you, you can work 40, 50, 60 hours a week, but there's a time when you can choose to be together. If it's Saturday morning, if it's Sunday morning, if it's Sunday evening, if it's Friday night, it's got to be date night. When we first meet, we invent things to do. You invent going to the movies, you invent going to dinner, but as we settle into our routine, once we're married or in a committed relationship, we tend to stop inventing things to do. So it gets boring and we start to go, oh, I've lost the spark, we've lost the fire. When in reality, all that needs to happen is you have to just keep inventing. Invent a fun night out. What's something that you both would greatly enjoy? And that goes a very long way to rekindling the spark, causing that connection. But you have to choose to do it. Well, yes, yeah, put, you get out of it what you put into it, right? Exactly. Let's see. How can people learn more about you? Oh, I like that. How they learn more about you and the Institute for Adult Communication. Well, a couple of ways. Uh, one, they can look us up online uh, at uh, www.instituteforadultcommunication.com. 
or and they can like us on Facebook, Institute for Adult Communication. Well, I like you already. I'll tell you. What do you guys think? A round of applause. This man has a lot to offer. I tell you. I tell you. McCall Jones. And uh, let me tell you, he brings a lot of information to the table. You want to contact him. I know you left the number here, right? That is 323-401-8851. Is that correct? Okay. You want to contact this young man? Open up the doors of communication. I mean, that's what it's about. You know, if you guys don't talk to each other and you just end up talking at each other, nothing's going to be accomplished. So, you know, I'll say it works for everybody, not only in relationships, but also family situations, you know? Family work. Yeah. In any kind of uh, relationship you have with people, you want to be able to communicate. And I know that because I'm a communication major. Ha ha. So, here we go. So, once again, another round of applause for McCall Jones. And thank you very much, sir, for coming on LMI tonight. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to try to do something. I know I'm going to drive Diego crazy. I'm going to try to get my cord over here, and I'm going to talk to the band. So there. Thank you. Thank you, McCall. Okay. They like that stuff. Let me get this young man. Can you see this? Can you, uh, should I get on the side? Let's see. Okay. Your name, sir, and where do you hail from? Larry Medina from... Let me talk to this one. Okay. Larry Medina from uh, La Mirada, California. Let's hear it for Larry. Come on. Anybody that lives in La Mirada and, and brags about it should be applauded. And how long have you been playing, Larry? Uh, we, the band itself? The band's been oh, a good... Oh. You? Oh, gee, 20 years, 20 plus years. Yeah. I try to blame it on the band. I don't. Blame it on the band. 20 years. Well, that sounds good, man. And great, man. I got I to gotta get this young man before he jumps out the window. Uh, <laughs> your name, sir, and where are you heal from? I'm Roscoe Vaughn from East Bell, California. From where? East Bell. That's near Chino Hills. Oh, okay. Area, yeah. Yeah, oh, bourgeois. I like that. There's a round of applause for this young man. <laughs> and how long have you been doing all this madness? Oh, I've been doing it about over 40 years now, yeah. You know, you know what gets me? He has a great voice. You hear him, he's belting out. When you talk to him, he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> really good. You save it for the next song, right? That's right. Uh, well, you're doing a, it up, it up. You do a fantastic job, man. I tell you. Let me get over and get this young lady. Hopefully, we'll reach you. I can applaud. It's okay. Don't be shy. Hope we have enough spaghetti to reach. Oh, well, thank you. That's what, the, that's what they told me when I was crossing the street. I'll step in front of you. Okay, your name, young lady, and where you hail from? I'm Chris Eugenio from Huntington Beach, California. A round of applause for Huntington Beach. Yeah, thank you. Which beckons the question, why are you, what are you doing out here? I work near here, and oh. plus the guys are here, so I'm here. Oh, blame it on the band. See, everybody blames the band. I don't know. No wonder you guys are backstreet. <laughs> So uh, where do you work? You work uh, close by or? I do. I work close by <laughs> Kaiser. Oh, Kaiser. We're right here in uh, Baldwin Park. East LA, actually. East LA. Oh, but let's hear for East LA. Thank you. <laughs> I grew up there. And how long have you been singing on? Uh, a while. <laughs> 20, a while. About twenty years. About. You're gonna be a little less specific, okay? Twenty years. About. About twenty years. Twenty years. Well, you started when you were three, right? Yes. Yes, I could tell. See, now she's happy. <laughs> well, thanks, dear, for coming on the show. No, no problem. Let's get this young man up here. All the ones that can move, please move. How you doing? All right, sir, your name and where are you from? Ron Crowder from Pasadena, California, a.k.a. RC, and uh, retired from the auto industry 25 years for American Honda, and now I'm just relaxing and enjoying my grandkids. Oh, man. You know, yeah, give a round of applause for grandkids. No, you know, you gotta, you got to have to be a little less shy, okay? Try to come out of your shell here, please. Can I do that for you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, how long have you been uh, been performing? I've actually been doing this for 48 years. 